What's up, everybody? Happy Friday. I'm Ryan Young, in for Coy Wire. Hope you've had a fantastic week. A lot of news to tell you about today, and not a lot of time. So let's get to it. We begin on Capitol Hill, where the longest federal government shutdown in U.S. history is finally over. President Donald Trump signed the agreement to reopen the federal government into law Wednesday evening. But the effects of the record 43-day shutdown could be felt for months or even years. The flight delays and cancellations that have plagued air travel will likely linger as air traffic controllers return to full-time schedules. And federal workers who haven't received a paycheck during the shutdown will still have to wait for their back pay. Put yourself in their shoes. You know, what would it be like if you were to show up for your job and do this for seven weeks, but not getting that paycheck that you usually do every two weeks? How are you going to make your way through that? It also remains unclear when full payments will be sent to the tens of millions of Americans who rely on government assistance programs like SNAP to help feed their families. Plus, there's a chance we may have to go through all of this again in just a few months. This deal only provides funding to most federal agencies through the end of January 2026, so stay tuned. They say you shouldn't sweat the small stuff, but that's exactly what the team in this next story is doing. Researchers at Arizona State University are studying how and why the human body sweats, and they're doing it in some cool new ways, like a first-of-its-kind sweating mannequin and a temperature-regulating suit similar to those worn by astronauts. The innovative approaches help them study sweat glands up close to see how they turn on and off. And this is the pursuit of perspiration has yielded some surprising discoveries. Turns out the salt from sweat actually helps cool your skin more effectively as your body temperature rises. Second stage, it ends up spreading farther along the skin and evaporating so it kind of cools you quicker, faster for the same amount of you know, sweat you, your, or dehydration you have. The team hopes this research will help them better understand how sweating safeguards the human body against Arizona's extreme heat. Turning now from scorching sunshine to a stunning night sky. Take a look at this, a dazzling display in the skies across the U.S. this week as the northern lights made their way as far south as Florida. The amazing auroras were caused by a pair of intense solar storms. Those occur when bursts of energy from the sun send solar winds crashing into Earth's atmosphere at more than 2 million miles per hour. The geomagnetic activity can also disrupt communication satellites and power grids. It even delayed a Blue Origin NASA mission bound for Mars. So if you had connection issues, I did, you can blame that on the sun. Time for your 10 second trivia. A group of penguins is known as what? A waddle, a raft, a colony, a huddle. If you said any of these, you put the wind in penguin. A group of penguins is called a raft when they are in the water, a waddle on land, a colony during breeding season, and a huddle when they cluster for warmth or try to score a touchdown. An animal rights protest over some prominent penguins in London has now gotten the attention of Parliament. More than 70 members of the UK's highest legislative body have joined calls for London's Sea Life Aquarium to improve living conditions for their 15 Gentoo penguins. Animal rights groups say the penguins are confined to a windowless basement enclosure with no daylight, fresh air, or outdoor access. But the aquarium says multiple teams are assigned to ensure the penguins are happy and healthy every day. Our Max Foster spoke with a penguin expert to understand what's best for the flightless feathered friends. If we bring up the pictures of the penguins that we've got, you know, to the untrained eye, they look pretty happy. I mean, they are in a basement, aren't they? There is no natural light. There isn't a huge amount of space. And well, people can see for themselves what it actually looks like. Uh, do you think they're happy? Penguins need, above all, uh, they need other penguins to be happy, but they also need enough water and they need enough land and enough natural conditions to be happy. What about the, the three main issues that um, the MPs have been talking about? That is the space, the fresh air, and the lack of natural light. How important are those three things to the, these penguins? They're gentoo penguins, and, and the picture I have seen shows them sort of on ice or something that looks like ice, 
Um, and if they're southern gentry penguins, then they're the, the sort of ice obligates. They're, they're birds that need to spend a lot of time on ice and they live in a place with very little bacterial load and very little fungal spores. And, and so actually the idea that you could take these birds and just plonk them outside in the UK and say they'd be happy um, might give them um, severe problems. You actually can't put it in normal fresh air without subjecting it to uh, fungal spores. And so the air that goes into exhibits that typically have things like emperors and, and chinstrap and Nadelian and gentoo penguins from that part of the world um, have to have highly filtered air. Um, so, so you can't actually take them and put them in fresh air unless you're in Antarctica. Um, with respect to the space and the daylight, well, I don't know what light regime they have. Um, good zoos, if they've got birds in, in housings like that, have alter the light regime to reflect the light regime they would have um, in the wild. So obviously darker in their winter and lighter in um, their summer. And then with regard to the space, to be honest, I mean, I think the husbandry requirements for penguins, they say they need the water to be four foot deep or something. And, you know, for penguins, that's, that is ridiculous. I mean, gentoo penguins dive to 400, 500, 600 feet. So um, four feet's not going to cut it. And I think the exhibit we're talking about is seven feet. And that doesn't cut it either. But there's not a penguin exhibit in the world that actually does cut it. You need enough space for them to swim properly. That means porpoise and enough, um, I guess, water activity for them to be excited by being in the water and also to bounce around on land and do the stuff they normally do. Today's story getting a 10 out of 10, a beloved school resource officer beating cancer and coming out of retirement to brighten students' days. Deputy Mark Hollywood Whaley is something of a celebrity at Anderson County High School. Morning, sir. How are you, buddy? Stay that way all day. For years, he's worked to keep students and faculty safe and done it all with a smile. Every school wants Hollywood. You know, if we had a fantasy draft for SROs, he would be the number one pick. Everybody loves Hollywood. We all love Hollywood. But in 2023, a throat cancer diagnosis forced the 42-year law enforcement vet to step away from the job he loves. I went to the doctor and she found that I had some tumors in the back of my throat. But cancer couldn't keep him down after completing chemotherapy and radiation, the Smiley SRO was declared cancer-free. Now Hollywood is fresh out of retirement and back on the job patrolling the halls and even cutting a rug at a recent pep rally. You know, when you get a chance to show out, you need to show out. <laughs> Safe to say everyone seems happy to have Hollywood back in the fold. And we all love just having him around 24-7. He's the life of the party, but he's also the same person to keep us safe. We say all the time, they don't care how much you know till they know how much you care. Uh, and I think our kids know that he cares about them. Now that's what I call an A-list celebrity. All right, superstars, let's get you ready for a Friday shout out. This one's going to the senders of this swagged out Letterman jacket. I stole it from Koi. I will give it to back to him though. Mr. Flava Hand and Miss Mary Bell at Kixington High School in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Coy, I promise I'll put this back on your desk, but I, I had to do the shout out. All right, hope you guys have a great weekend. Coy will be back on Monday. I'm Ryan Young, and we are CNN 10.